Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome. Jason, welcome. 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 This is Jason. You. Welcome to you. This is Jeff. Hi. And we used to do this show called It's the Beer Talk, and on the podcast, right. uh, you guys have seen us. We've talked about some Oktoberfest beers, but today, it's actually the Cider Talk and Jeff. That's right. It's New England Cooks present Cider Talk instead of Beer Talk today. Wow. You and know this... why? Because cider is near and dear to both of us. Well, especially you. Especially you. You smell like cider. Oh, thank you. Thank you for <laughs> noticing. <laughs> And there's such a lot to talk about because cider, as you know, very, very popular in the Northeast, right? Yes. Very popular in Vermont. Yes. But also very popular nationally and internationally. And, and growing. And we'll yes. get into that. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a great variety here uh, that we're going to showcase for you folks today and, uh, and talk about a little of the history as well. Well, you know, since your favorite episode or your favorite part of the episode was what's in the fridge. Yeah. Why don't I just go see what's in the fridge and then we'll we'll roll it in. I bet you there's some cider in the fridge. Let's and, see. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, and there's some All beautiful right. cider in the fridge. Yes. One of the things that we'll talk about is, you know, when we talk about <laughs> cider, you think about a nice dry, crisp uh, apple cider. But there's yeah. so many flavor variations. There's so many app, you know, based on apples and in some cases based on blueberries. Sometimes blueberries or even guava, Jason. Right. That's so. a that's a big one. Guava is a hit right now. It's 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 a it's something that you can find in an IPA, but today we're we're showcasing it in a, a cider. This is uh, from Ace Craft Cider in the Sonoma Valley of California. Almost looks like an IPA, Jason. It, it's beautiful, actually. Mm -hmm. And and this is a family oh, business that goes back. The number one uh, fruit cider wow. in in the U.S. And they put their name on the map with pineapple, mm -hmm. uh, and now they're doing guava, and they're doing mango. They have yes. a rosé. They also have a dry. Um, they have a peri. That's a, a, right. As well. Yeah. And it's all real fruit. Uh, there's no sugar added, and um, it's a brand that we're featuring in Vermont. It's it's you know it's not a Vermont cider, so it doesn't you know it doesn't go through the roof. Right. But if you're a cider connoisseur. And you want to you want to uh, visit a couple of different styles. Ace is one not to miss. Well, and it's tropical, Jason. It's juicy. It actually probably is a really good cider for those people who do like the New England style hazy IPAs and that like tropical fruit. Yeah, this is a really good first step over. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it, but it's not as sweet as some of the um, the older ciders in the market where people think, oh, I don't want to drink cider because it's too sweet. This is a nice little half stepping stone. We'll talk about some really bone dry, zero grams of residual sugar ciders in a minute. But I was really proud of you, and I don't know if our listeners and our viewers noticed, <laughs> but Jason used the word peri. And peri is a term in the cider industry to refer to a cider that's made from pears, right? So cider is made from apples, peri is made from pears. And uh, I think you might have learned that in the class that we did together, right? It was a fun class. Yeah. Cer I'm a certified cider professional. That's right. We have about 20% of our sales staff at Feral Distributing is uh, our certified cider professionals. This is a program that we participate in through the American Cider Association, which we are active members with. And uh, I've actually just joined the um, education uh, committee to, to help develop that program a little bit further going forward. Reverend Colonel, the big dog, the <laughs> instructor, if you will. I'm just very passionate about cider. And uh, with, with this uh, certification, it's, it's kind of like uh, Cicerone is to beer and uh, sommelier is to wine. The cider, certified cider professional is to cider. And it's really raising the bar and making sure that um, the sales reps and the bartenders and the bar managers uh, know what they're talking about when it comes to cider. Because as you mentioned, this category is really growing Blowing rapidly, yeah. nationally, internationally. The last time I went to CiderCon, I was drinking cider from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's incredible, you know? Yeah, and we have, we have a variety of these ciders in our portfolio. We have Recordling, which I don't want to overlook, uh, which is from Sweden. Um, yes. There are some really popular international ciders not to be overlooked. You know, they're very popular here, Washington, Vermont. We talked about um, Minnesota. Yeah, New York. <laughs> uh, if you're still listening from New York and watching, thank you for staying around. <laughs> but we have a lot of great cideries right here in Vermont, Jason. So why don't you take us down to Virgen's there? Well, uh, in Virgen's we have Shaxbury cider, and um, it's it's on the quieter side, but it's really uh, they're really making some noise right now. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, always been on the dry. And uh, what I'm drinking right now is uh, Shaxbury Light. This, is, uh, this has just come out recently. They stopped the fermentation a little earlier. They don't add any sugar. This is only 100 calories. 
Uh, it's gluten free. It's 4.2 percent. You get a better price point um, on this because it's it's just a simple light cider. What right. you see is what you get. It's starting to splash around. Available in kegs in our on premise, and then these uh, Shaxbury light cans are available in six packs in the off premise. And that's another great stepping stone if you want to try a cider that's a little bit uh, not as sweet but still has some nice juicy character. That reminds me of um, kind of like the fresh pressed cider that you'd get in the fall. You know, I think a lot of people th just think about cider when it comes to the fall, right, Jason? Because that's when we're harvesting apples. We've got our uh, pumpkin spice lattes on the way to the orchard while we're picking the fruit. But One of the things I was talking about earlier, too, is Thanksgiving. Yes. Do not overlook cider on the Thanksgiving table. People get a couple of bottles of wine. You sit down as a family. It's so lovely. You want to freak some people out? Bring a nice bottle or a four-pack of cider. And when people look at you funny, just pour it for them. It pairs so well oh. with the turkey and with all the sides. It's yeah. delicious. So there is a cider season. It is the fall. It's the holidays. And quite frankly, it's, it's year-round for for us. When you talk about food pairing, which we talk about a lot actually, and you know the reason it works is because of the acidity, right? Apples have acidity. Apples have malic acid, um, you know, and that's that's got a little bit of a, a bite to it. And so sometimes it can be a little harsh if it's just by itself. But you start putting it with food, and that acid helps kind of cut through any of the fatty qualities, you know, the mashed potatoes, the stuffing, and then also the flavors <laughs> go really well. You've got the cranberry sauce. Exactly, right? So Shaxbury does, uh, they're very much known for the Vermonter. That's kind of what put them in the map. Um, it, was, it was aged in gin barrels. Uh, they have a dry, they have a rosé, uh, which is beautiful. So I encourage you to try that. They have a great mix pack out um, that gives you a little sampling of all three. And again, it's one of Vermont's uh, finest right there uh, in addition to Citizen Cider that offers a lot of great variety. Right. Uh, right here in Burlington, Vermont. This one, the brose, is in fact uh, fermented with blueberries, so you get a really nice color in your in your glass as well. And blueberries are very similar in a small way to mm -hmm. to to apples as well. You're not getting off of the the characteristic too much, but it adds a nice little sweetness and um, and color to the glass. And a little bit of uh, the implication of rose, right? Brose, right? Right. And uh, you get that nice color. You get some, uh, some a minute amount of tannin from the blueberry, which is another great uh, food pairing option, especially Thanksgiving time, to your point. In the rosé <laughs> category, you said Shaxbury has one, but we also have a rosé from Eden, mm. uh, which is up in the Northeast Kingdom. Sparkling uh, dry. That's right. This is a brand new rosé. So they had a rosé in a 750 milliliter bottle. Excuse me, they do have a rosé. Uh, that's called the Imperial. This is the, uh, this is the Brut um, rosé in the can. And... A little bit less alcohol is about a uh, half. I think the uh, the Imperial is about 11% alcohol. This one's much more on the like casual, uh, sipping from the can kind of category. They're picking up the color here with currants. Uh, so similar to the blueberries, they're getting current here. And Eden, a lot of people may overlook sometimes that it's from Newport, Vermont, very small, tiny town in Vermont. But Eleanor and her team, are they have international accolades. You'll see them featured in, in Wine Enthusiast magazine and, right. and some of the things that we talked about with, with, uh, with food pairing and things like that. Uh, Eden Ciders is one of the most dry and elegant ciders that you could, that you could put together with your family uh, in a nice meal. And Eleanor does a lot for the cider community too. She's always on the board of the American Cider Association and really um, you know, part of the national conversation about about cider in this country and how to how to rise the tide for all the boats, right? Right. <laughs> and before I lose uh, citizen, I you know everyone knows Unified Press, right? That's cider for the people. Get excited, citizen cider, Get UP, excited. Dirty Mayor. Also put them on the map, right? That's got a whole story behind it as well. Yep. But that ginger in cider that goes together so well. Wits up, one of your favorites. Personal you know, favorite, yeah. Belgian yeast, uh, so it gives it a little earthiness. And then uh, Lake Hopper, uh, Tulsi. They have so many great ciders over at Citizen. Yeah. Uh, and then a little further south, still in Vermont, Champlain Orchards. Champlain Orchards. He's got uh, Bill Sir and his team down there in, uh, in Shoreham um, doing a whole orchard-based uh, cidery approach, right, where they're, where they're growing the apples and they're growing heirloom varietals. Um, that are that are really made for cider making. Uh, this is we have today Kingston Dry. So Kingston because of Kingston Black Apple and Dry because well guess what Jason? Super dry. No sugar. No sugar. Super dry. And uh, this is a really awesome uh, example of what 
um, orchard-based cider can be uh, in the bone dry category, but still in the can. So you're still, you know, you're still you're going down the lake shore. You don't want to bring the glass or something like that. We mentioned that cider is really hot in the fall, but cider is really a year-round beverage. You know, they make it in the fall when the apples are harvested, uh, but you can enjoy it at the beach, and I often <laughs> do, and I recommend it. In fact, taking some with you, and they've got a bunch of varietals too, Jason. I mean, if you, Probably know them off Mac the top and, of your head. Mac and maple. Oh, classic. You got, you got to try that. But Bill's been kind enough to invite us down. I've participated in the grafting exercise. Uh, I've smelled the pies being made fresh. I've been in his cooler and seen everywhere he keeps his stash and, uh, of apples. Of apples. Uh, of apples. What were you thinking? Uh, and um, anyways, we're very fortunate in yeah. Vermont to have uh, the cideries that we have. Most of it's locally sourced. Sometimes you got to you know, swim across the lake over to New York and, and, and source some apples over there. Either way, uh, it's, 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 a great, um, it's, it's a great option for us in Vermont, for us in the Northeast. And uh, before we part, uh, I'd, hate to, I'd hate to overlook Ancho. Ancho. This is a great project that we came across, um, thanks to our friend Eleanor, actually, at Eden. Right. She made the introduction uh, between us and, and them. And, and this is uh, Sam and Rachel Fitz, uh, a brother and sister team founded this cidery in Washington, D.C. And it started out as a, as a Basque restaurant doing Spanish food. And then they said, why don't we add a cidery to it? And now the cidery is, you know, getting distribution of fun places like Vermont. Really just one of those brands that I'm just passionate about because of how nice the people are and also how good the cider is. So the, so the Cidre Blanc here that we have, Jason, is a hazier style. Um, Spanish style, so it has a little bit of that funk on the nose that you expect from a Basque cider. Uh, but it's not super funky. It's not off the deep end. It's just a little more interesting, uh, and it definitely has that, that kind of natural haze to it. They make a rosé. We talked a lot about rosé today. Their rosé is apples only. Right. So some apples actually have red flesh when you cut them open, and they're using these red fleshed apples to kind of add complexity and add that color. Um, and then just a bunch of other really fun projects. They do a collaboration with Eden called Nevertheless. They have some wood fermented ciders, some wild yeast ciders. All fermented with wine yeast. Wine yeast or naturally occurring uh, and, wild yeast. Too. And, their, and, their, and their tasting room is known internationally, the, uh, right in the D.C. area. So, yep. uh, so just like the craft beer scene, I encourage you to, uh, if you're into ciders, I encourage you to branch out a little. Get out of your comfort zone. Explore some different ciders. There's some really good ones out there. You can always go back to your old favorite, but, but these dry, crisp uh, ciders, they give you an honest uh, impression of how apples are so different, You know how they can alter sweetness or dryness or just the color uh, in a glass. Or, and they're so food friendly. Or tannin. Or yeah. acidity, you know, these are very complex because you know most beer doesn't have acidity or tannin, right? So you're kind of navigating different flavors. And you know what? I've seen your untapped profile, and you've checked in enough beers for this year. So <laughs> I encourage you to pick up a few ciders and check those out. And then uh, you know, I think you'll be a believer whether you go for something you know tropical and like the guava from Ace, or uh, you know bone dry like Kingston Dry from Champlain Orchards. It's going to be a great fall, Jason. And we're going to keep drinking these all year round. So it is a great fall. Let's Here's just say cheers to cider. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.